Okay, Hugh. By way of contrast, this one got off to a fast start. And this was connected to where the mother chunk, the piece that was planted with it, uh, like gave birth to the new plant. Mm. So this is where it sent down its first nitrogen fixing roots. Wow, that's a lot. And boy, it sent them down. And then look what happened. It took off. Man, it was on a real roll. When I cut off these stems up here after harvesting it, one of them was a flower bud stem. Oh. So it had reached the stage of of its like energy uh, sufficiency that it could blossom and give off energy. So this shows you the importance of nitrogen fixation to the growth of ginger. And what are the little root hairs? Do you have? Oh, these kinds of roots are a different kind. See, these these are mineral uptake roots, and they're taking up things like silica. And I remember you showed us that on turmeric, also. Yeah, it has is even more pronounced between these different kinds of roots. Uh, but actually, some of these uh, 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 ginger and turmeric family plants are great nitrogen fixers, better than any legumes. This is like more than the nodules on legume roots. So that fixes the nitrogen for how long? It'll keep fixing nitrogen. These roots here go down and form a little bulblet. I've broken these off by, in virtue of how I dug it, and but they form a little bulblet down there. What the function of that is in terms of the dynamics of flow in the stem, I don't know. But they've got a certain style root. That's a much different root from this one. See, these two different styles. So you grow it in the soil without a greenhouse. So many think they need a greenhouse. Uh, Talk grows, a little bit about that, please. Yeah, it grows better. These roots are much more free to go straight down. See how they go straight down? Mm. They're going straight down to, like, the center of the earth. And the nitrogen-fixing forces are stronger in that direction. So they're going straight into the nitrogen-fixing stream of forces. So what's the difference between that and growing it in a hothouse or well, greenhouse? Well, you grow it in a pot or in a hothouse or in, uh, like, a bed that's raised or insulated or whatever from the soil, and it just removes it further away from that. Okay, so people, we're here in North Georgia Mountains, but people are even doing this in Canada? No, well, people are growing ginger in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Uh, without greenhouse? As far as I know, without greenhouse. Uh, I know uh, and so a couple actually, yes. uh, that they've shifted their farm operation over, I think, into Manitoba from... Uh, from Ontario, but they have grown ginger. Uh, it's uh, He's from a German immigrant family, and she's from a Korean immigrant family, and they grow ginger. Yep. Does it actually produce enough to make it worthwhile? Well, Does it multiply is, enough? Yeah. I've, as far as I know, it's somewhere around 300 tons. No, tons? No. 300 might be 300 tons of ginger are produced in Canada annually. Wow. And that's between the Ontario, the lower Ontario Peninsula mostly. Well, we have friends here and, locally that insist the they have to grow it in a greenhouse. And they just haven't tried it. This is risky, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you have to find, to find out what the plant really can do. And look, see how tight the the nodes were? At first, it was just powering on lots of silica forces. And now, once it took off, man, it's going. So I know you've spoken to me, and when we go in the grocery stores and look at ginger, showing me how heavily nitrated ginger is. How do you know it's not nitrated in this plant, which I know it's not? Okay, well, see, uh, if you planted it with a soil full of nitrates, then you get these broad distances between the nodes right off. Immediately you get that. Uh, 
But this one started off with very tight nodes, you know, from this is one growth ring, you might say, to another, to another, to another. And when they're that tight, you know it's not getting nitrates. Nitrates spreads that way out. The highest nitrate ginger will always have like distances like this between its nodes. Mm. And it's like... So the it's nitrogen, bizarrely bad ginger. So the nitrogen that's being fixed through this roots, it is not a nitrate. No, no, it's going to be amino acid nitrogen, and as long as it's kept in the living form, it won't oxidize to the nitrate. But you got to figure where nitrogen's coming from. It is the vehicle for light energy. In our atmosphere, it's completely transparent to light. It is the medium of transmission of light in our atmosphere. But it's not fixed in the atmosphere. It's free. Actually, yeah, it's free, but you might say it's paralyzed. Uh, it doesn't enter into activity in any way other than conducting light. But in the soil, where it's darkest, is where the forces that attract nitrogen are. So what pulls nitrogen into its interaction with the minerals and the biological processes in the soil is that attractive force down there of utter and complete darkness. Nitrogen only works at night. <laughs> it's very easy to remember because of that. So now in the soil, now that these nitrogen fixing roots, will that soil con still contain nitrogen next year from this fixation? Okay, what will happen? Because see, in their initial stages, these real fine... Those are the mineral. Those, those are the mineral uptake roots. Mm -hmm. uh, and the finer, more finely they branch and the denser they are, yeah. then the better the mineral uptake of the plant is. Uh -huh. But you're even getting them on these roots. And that's important because if there is sufficient calcium in the soil... And this would be a plant that would respond to a light dose of lime. Then Before planting? Yes, before planting, okay. if you put a light dose of lime, if you just put it on the surface after planting and mulching, it would still be appropriate. Okay. And that would allow, because it's the calcium that is the primary attractor for the uh, chemical activities of nitrogen thanks so, again hugh we sure appreciate your knowledge and your love and devotion <laughs> <laughs> well look at it i mean it's just such an amazing amazing and of story. course you use the biodynamic preps yeah yep and that that helps because whatever got that one off to a slow start at least I got a number of them. I got the majority of them off to a fast start. Yeah, and we've been making crystallized ginger, ginger tea, and ginger beer from this wonderful oh, yeah. homegrown ginger. Wow. It's really nice, too. Isn't it wonderful? Okie doke. Thank you. Now let's see what I can do with this. Hey, you dog. You... I just thought digging ginger is such a story. It is a story. And you've been the great pioneer for ginger in the U.S.